Welcome back to Eat the Race. This is week 208, day 7, the final day. And we'll do our match. We only got one to do, so we'll do that first. And then we'll take a look at the replays. We got two of them as of right now to watch. So we still need to get into Bolt of Heaven. We are 6, uh, 56, 56 points away from it as of right now. So... Let's see what the final day throws at us. A left. Bees. 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 All the bees. All the time. Um, are they plus 10 or something? They are plus 10. Well, at least the Nezala is plus 10. And so is the Raisin because, you know, 4 star. Ninian and Leaf. So at least they're team scores properly and they're using a setup that I use well similar to this I like the other map in which I can cover three whole lanes as you supposed to two lanes um yeah so for this no need to go I don't need far safe there's nothing too far safe so player phase maybe A3 do some A3 nanigans. A3 will definitely just blow Nezala into a thousand pieces. And that's it. Just she will just kill him. Kill him dead. Alright. So she'll get repositioned here. Move up one space, take him out, then Kanto away. And that's it. We'll just, after that, we just get Marv in place to tank. I did switch up Marv. He now has Mystic Boost instead of double, uh, double uh, bonus doubler. Which, I guess in this team, are they lols? Well, no, Flyers cannot inherit lols. So the only lol will be Leth. But she's actually the one that he kills the easiest. We can even stop the dance. Or we can just Omni Tank now. We'll go with A3. This. Alright, we're just gonna A3 this map. Let A3 do what A3 does best. <laughs> there we go. And then we need to get our settings. Alright. Yep, they can Nezala. Since I don't actually avoid left if I go one down, because she'll go one, two, three, and mean for me, I'll just step on this trap. We can go here. Yeah, we already stopped your, your activities. I will go. Over here? Speak. All right, and we want to get a three. Out of there for the time being. Yep. Did that one was that one was my mistake. I did not see that. I forgot that Tavern could just go there. But Tavern's is not gonna kill Marv. So right. 
All right, so my Marv can move the extra space as of right now. So if I were to go here, he can go one, two, three. Kill the left. I wouldn't be able to set up for far save yet. If I rip on here and go one, two, three and take out Anezala. And then set up behind him. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna be best. So if you move over here is fine. Take out the Nezala. I mean the Tivern. We already took out the Nezala. Alright, um, yeah, I don't think anybody can come from behind me. So. Go here. Go right there. And yeah, I don't think we... No, actually, A2 can I... I mean, Sarah's can I reach? So... We can still make an attempt at getting the pots. I refuse to yield. I refuse to yield. All right. Now, like I said, I can make an attempt to get in the pots, but the question is how? Marv. I will have to like beta race him. Hmm. Is on the speedy size, size, side, speedy side. Hmm. I love you. I guess Fjorm. Fjorm should be able to thank him with debuffs and um, damage reduction and all those other good stuff. So, that's what we're going to do. Take our Saros. Get Fjorm to tank. He won't have these buffs, so 48 will his be his max speed. I will have my buffs just because Marv eats Bright Shrine, which is only a one, so it's not even that big a deal. Alright, I think defense style then. Oh yeah, all day, every day. Together. Ether. I'll consider it. One, two, three. I will go. Close your eyes. Speak. Get the other ether. Right. And take out the racing. 
Alright, this wasn't too difficult. We even got the pots. Didn't need it, but you know. Always go for the pots. Alright, so this does put us at tier 39 easily. Are we gonna have our fourth week straight of top 1k? I don't think so. Yeah, I didn't think so. Just because my defense was not as good this week. Because we lost another 28 points. Had this been flipped, we would have only lost 8 points. But once you see this one, uh, it is pretty interesting what they use. But let's go with this one first. We'll watch the newest one first. And then we'll watch the other one. Because I, the other one's a lot more interesting. Alright, so we have Chrome, Brave type with Gale Force and Fury, Wings of Mercy, Elamine, Dry Speed, Summer Elagar, Four Flowers, Heavy Blade, Swap, Gale Force, Thor, Wings of Mercy, Smite, Gale Force, Attack Defense, Form, Blue Area, Plus 5, Plus 4. Uh, Wings of Mercy in Ground Orders with Luna. Now the reason I left her for last is because this is not a um, Godlike Reflexes Lin. This is a Wings of Mercy Gale Force Lin with Blaze Session. Summoner supported. So, I don't know. It is interesting and it will be even more interesting once we get to the other match. But yeah, of course. Turn one. They actually go with Lin. Lin actually gets enough stats to outspeed Marv. Which is pretty, pretty interesting. Go after a tree. Thanks to the one cooldown she gets, she's able to gale force even though uh, even without the um, special getting the special at the end. Wall breaker. So so far we know they lose a unit. But which unit? <laughs> and guess what they didn't do this turn? Elamin did not full star um Veronica which let us here go after her. All will perish. I go to God. So yeah, they forgot to fall star Veronica. They got zeros. Yeah, they don't really have a way to stall out Veronica, so it is also day seven, so they just cut their losses, they didn't go for the pots. So yeah, now this one, which I say is very interesting, because this team setup is very interesting. So they have an Ashera, plus 10, plus 10, reposition, Wings of Mercy, chill attack. They have a uh, giant chicken, plus 10, plus 15, uh, eternal breath refined for speed, um, which is interesting. Uh, double life and death, infantry pulse, speed rest, speed defense rules, Aegis. 
basically she's just here to pose down um to pose down and to suck not suck uh to take bright shine away from marv gatekeeper is here for the same exact reason a plus one plus one hp res dry speed infantry pulse so yeah he is here to soak dark shine then you have a uh, plumeria fortress res dry speed wings of mercy aerobatics elamine fortress res wings of mercy phantom res and finally a plus 10 plus 10 brave marv with godlike reflexes so we know where that godlike reflexes from that lin went to distant pressure velocity 3 speed smoke 4 and darting breath and this team works really cool especially the way the marv gets godlike reflexes to keep charging because they're not to turn cooldown so darting breath will recharge it uh, but it's thanks to Genesis Falchion that they're able to do something really cool with it. So, of course, usually tanking Marv, Legendary Marv is not a great idea. But if you fall starting with Elamine, then he doesn't get any of his buffs. And because he'll move to spaces, he'll also be outside of the uh, range of his unity skill. He will still get buffs from debuffs. So yeah, because Marv has Vantage, he'll either kill the enemy and keep Godlike Reflexes, or they'll, he'll attack first, then he'll, so if he attacks and kills the enemy, no problem. Godlike Reflexes stays, uh, stays set. But, if the enemy is able to survive his attack, he's able to hit first with Vantage, gets Counter, activates Godlike Reflexes, and then he's able to attack again, recharging Godlike Reflexes. So it is a really cool Marth build, I'm not even going to lie. I still think that Legendary Marv is better than Brave Marv, but in this specific composition that they're running, uh, Brave Marv is uh, slightly better. Mostly, like, again, they're soaking chills, so he's avoiding both the darks and uh, bright and dark shine by having Faye eat the uh, attack speed debuffs and Gatekeeper eat the. Uh, defense rest debuffs they're also providing all of the buffs that they need to morph so morph activate his weapon with Faye. so Faye is the one that provides the buffs as opposed to um having marv be the one that provides the buffs with fire emblem or what is it binding blade And yeah, they only probably only needed one just to get the last match of the week. But yeah, uh, really cool. And Gatekeeper also, of course, provides the anti uh, Wings of Mercy teleport shenanigans to protect the backline. That way, Marv can just pretty much solo. He's not running with any kind of support. Velocity, of course, gives him the uh, the tempo effect. And Darting Breath gives him the two cooldowns for Godlike Reflexes. So all in all, a really cool team. Probably the only problem over here would be Distant Pressure. They probably want the other one. Um, the one that's just enemy face that Ike has. Um, I think that would be better just so he doesn't. he's not taking chip damage. Even though, of course, he heals. But I think it would just be better instead of uh, Distant Pressure. Because you don't need the speed in player phase with this kind of build. 
The reason why I ran it on my mark is because I need him to have that speed on a player face because he has the tempo skill to be able to move, which is why Brave Marv completed. Literally, they have the same build, you know. So I also did switch out uh, no follow-up over here, although that match, the one that he got taken out, just happened to be a very hard counter to him. But yeah, um, let's take a look how you guys ended the week if you guys are done playing for today. We came in third this time um, behind Orum, which we'll talk about this in a second. And Matt, we got Michael, Dark Luster, Kenny, Promise, ECLA, which all made it to tier 21, eh, 39. Gams, Lambres, Neo Sourcemen. Uh, all managed to stay in Bolt of Heaven. Then we got Brave Blitz, Logan, Diego, Eva, Jack Yomi, Dogs, Alan, Amethyst. And somewhere down here, there she is, our friend Bean. Alright, so refines i don't know if they were already live by the time i played last night or they came in um after it but we do have refines so the only ones that i, I don't have every unit um that got a refine so i'll pull all the ones that i do have which are around here Yune, which is the only one I have refined so far. And then our Sword Cavalier. Where are you, Sword Cavalier? Wrong Sword Cavalier. Wrong Sword Cavalier. There you are. We also, of course, we got it. Um, Cynthia. And I think the only one that I have... Uh, the only I don't have um, Hector so the only other unit that I have at least of plus 5 I don't have Python at plus 5 out of 5 star I mean is female fallen Corin. so we'll take a look at this four the other two uh, said I don't have Hector I don't have the a 5 star Python and I don't remember this any other unit. But, yeah, but let's take a look at their weapon refinery. So first up is Yune, which got a big upgrade to her weapon. We'll load up her regular weapon just so we can see it in comparison to her refined weapon so grand rest plus three that stays up as sort of combat which is um it's still it worked like that before it's just it never actually said it um if false H or if false hp is 75 or if a penalty is active on four grants attack rest plus six up from just attack plus six to unit during combat unit makes a guarantee follow-up attack she keeps that if unit initiates combat, reduces damage from force first attack by X percentage. X equals to two times total penalties on four within two spaces of target, including target who has the highest total penalties. So yeah, basically she just uh, takes up all the debuffs she has on the enemy, adds them up together and reduces damage she takes by that amount. Which is a pretty insane kind of damage reduction. Um, this is penalty damage reduction that technically only someone like Yune can run. I guess someone like Guntra, if they ever put this on like a B skill, Guntra would be able to run this type of uh, skill as well, just because they're units that provide the debuffs themselves. But 
this has no cap so she can literally if she goes up to 100 percent she will go she can go up to 100 percent damage reduction she can go above 100 percent damage reduction uh because remember that debuffs and uh panic stack which is what her weapon does if you initiate combat or fit into spaces of an ally grass attack rest plus five to unit during combat and deals damage equals to penalties on force within two spaces of target, including target who has the highest sort of penalties, excluding area effects special. So yeah, she does add through damage, not boosted damage like she used to do, um, but just through damage. And of course, um, Chaos Name now gives the panic effect, which is why I said like debuffs and panic stack. So the amount of damage that she can deal as true damage and the amount of damage reduction that she can have are pretty insane. Luckily, this is this weapon only works in player phase because she needs to initiate combat. Uh, as our combat, if false HP is 75 or if penalty is active on four grants attack response to unit during combat, unit makes a guarantee follow-up attack if unit initiates combat. Only if unit initiates combat. Which is the one reason that one way you'll be able to deal with unit you have to player phase her do not try to enemy phase her unless you're like fjorn fjorn should still be able to kill her through her uh damage reduction just because of the amount of damage that she'll do us through damage will get negated and turn into ice mirror damage for it um you might you might still want to run unit with an impact skill um, she does not come with uh, attack speed. I mean, attack rest unity, which I haven't taught her. But in case she doesn't kill for some reason on the first hit, you might still want to have a way to uh, prevent her from getting double. So mirror impact still helps. Next we got Elliewood, which we'll take a look at uh, Vision Security, which we already knew what it was, obviously, but uh, it grants attack speed death red, attack speed death plus six, no panic and counter. So he would actually be countering um, Yune in some way, thanks to the no panic. Not that he doesn't um, remove debuffs. That's something like Bride of Yorm that can remove debuffs neutralizes penalties so if you have Fiorm and Elliewood on the same team you can straight up counter unit 100% because he'll counter the null he'll negate the panic and she'll negate the debuffs but move, uh, going back to Elliewood and of course the counter one which as I said is probably better on him than on his allies since he's usually run as a buffing unit to omni tanks or just tanking strats in general however his refine got a major upgrade before it was just attack plus three bonus doubler to highest ally and a story now he has still has that attack plus three and a bonus doubler but now he also gives himself bonus doubler so he's bonus doubler to unit and ally with the highest attack excluding unit even though like excluding unit meaning that he himself will not be the only recipient is basically what is why that specific clause is there at start of combat if units hp is above 24 percent grants attack speed death rest plus four to unit during combat so that's just the base weapon upgrade and now they're fine if unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally grants all star plus all stats plus four to unit neutralizes false bonuses from rallies and etc during combat and deal 15% of foes defense, including a spar or specials that trigger before combat, IA, IE, AOE specials. So bonus doubler, um, debuff, no, I mean not debuff, buff neutralizations on the enemy, no panic, canto, and this is all what he gives him himself, and plus eight to all stats is he's within two spaces. So, yeah, this does uh, improve Eliwood's uh, fighting capability. 
Uh, I used to run him with Heavy Blade, and he, I can still run him with Heavy Blade. Uh, but now with all the stats that he gives himself, it's easier to run him, um, for him to be able to even run Gale Force, thanks to the bonus doubler, uh, and nullifying the buffs on the enemies. As long as he's just not one-shotting something, he can just hit, get hit, hit back, retreat with Kanto, heal with um, Floor Refresh. So yeah, definitely a major upgrade to Eliwood. Then we got Cynthia, who got the Lance of Heroics. So Lance of Heroics, if an ally's HP is, of, is below or equal to 80%, you can move to a space adjacent to the ally. So improve Wings of Mercy. As start of combat, if unit's HP is above 25%, grants bonus to units, attack, speed, death, and rest. During combat, equal to 4 plus X. X being the number of spaces from starting position to end position of whoever nation in combat times 2 with a max of 8. Basically, Clash. So she has Wings of Mercy and Clash as the base of her weapon. So without the refine, she will have this, which is already really good. Clash on a unit that can teleport um, is really good. Unfortunately, it's capped out at eight. I wish it was capped out a little higher or with no cap. Well, no cap might just be slightly too powerful, especially because she gives her to all the stats. So maybe like 12 would have been better. Um, but still, she will be able to buff herself pretty consistently by 8 when she's just teleporting to attack. Now, if unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, grants attack, speed, death, and rest plus 4 to unit during combat, and bonus to attack, speed, death, rest during combat equal to current penalties on each of those stats times 2. Example, if unit has 27 penalty, basically unity. She has unity. Plus 4 unity. Omni unity because this is to all stats. Uh, which means if you want to build her to be to soak debuffs from your mainline unit on like a Gale Force team or something like that, she can go in. Uh, your main unit will go in. Then she'll come in with uh, Wings of Mercy, which she doesn't have to run it because she has a built into her weapon. Hit the enemy. Take advantage of all the debuffs that she soaked already. And then set up for um, whatever you want to do. Like if you, you can run it with like double fury. Fury 4 and fury seal just so she can take damage. And set up wings of mercy for others easier. Like if your main unit uh, didn't drop down below 80%. Then she can be the wings of mercy setup. Uh, all in all, a major improvement considering that she just had uh, Fire Sweep lands. Finally, on the ones I have, uh, Female Corrin, or Female Fallen Corrin to be exact. So her weapon used to be just Attack plus 3, all stats, and then uh, buffs to all stats based on the number of allies. 6 if none, 4 if 1, 2 if 2, and nothing if she had more than three allies within it, uh, within two spaces of her. Now, she still grants that attack plus three, and her weapon still works the same way, but now is, if no allies, she gets plus seven, so that's up by one. If one, by five, up by one. If two, three, also up by one. If three, one, which is, any, um, now she gets both even on like a, arena team she'll still get plus one if all units are together but if there's uh four or more then she'll still get zero so one to all of the all of the ally conditions that she gets and the refine is now at start of combat if units hp is over 24 percent grants all stats plus four to unit during combat that's no matter what and reduces damage from force first attack by X equal to 30 number of allies within two spaces of unit times 10 minus with a minimum of zero. So she can actually negate her own damage reduction by having three allies near her. 
So in Arena, that would be like when you lose, uh, you will lose that if you're running like all your units together. Outside of combat, if units HP is above 24% and units attack is greater than full stress, units first attack deals damage equal to X of difference between X equal to 30 minus number of allies within two spaces and stand with a minimum of zero. So yeah, she, she is doubling down on her leave me alone. She is like, get away from me. I don't want anybody near me. Stay at least three feet at uh, three tiles away from me at all times and that's basically what she is she's just a ball of stats that wants to be by herself now you can still run in with like a damage reduction with like elamine or flame uh, her own damage reduction would go down to 20 and the true damage that she deals will go down to 20 percent she will only get five those stats as opposed to seven but you can compensate by giving like if you're running flame uh, you can flame can run like a drive some a drive attack or drive res or something like that you still want to keep flame within two spaces so flame would make up for one of the sets she's losing or if you have uh, a hold skill then that would help Corin because it will debuff by four allies while still remaining within two spaces of them and Corin will just double down by running up probably a unity skill since she doesn't nullify debuffs I mean yeah no never mind yeah, she neutralizes penalties during combat so no unity just more solo skills run this encounter dragon uh, unfortunately she's a dragon so this would be like a prime candidate for some like godlike reflexes or um what's that other defensive special that we got um vital astra something like that but unfortunately being a dragon she can run those things she can run uh she can still run the panic plow a eh? Sudden panic or better yet, she just runs no follow-up to because being a ball of stats, she can easily hit speeds enough for never to get double. She'll have the damage reduction from herself, which would only be 20 if you're running with a support. Uh, but it will add up to whatever that support gives you. So Elamine or Flame can give you 30. So you'll still get a little more out of it. You'll be losing some. Uh, the amount of stats you lose by just having one support, preferably Elamine or um, Flame, is, um, how to say this, um, is negligible, but only at one unit. The amount of damage you lose, though, that one, uh, the true damage, that one is, uh, there's no compensating for that. You're not going to get that. There's no way for you to get that. But other than that, she just doubles down on her play style of being a loner, being a leave me alone kind of unit. You could support her with like um, units that are both from a distance. So that is something. But yeah, those are the only ones I have. I don't have Hector, and I do not have a five-star Python. And we'll see if they finally move it. Yeah, they had not moved it up here, so I'm thinking I'm missing one unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, Petra. Petra is the one that we're missing. So let's take a look at Petra. So, Hunting Blade. Accelerate Special Trigger cooldown minus one. Effect against beasts. At serve combat if unit, at serve combat if units, attack speed, death rest, 
are less than that of an ally within two spaces grants plus five to unit during corresponding stats during dagger so dagger change and it's now if units within three spaces of an ally grants all stat plus four to unit during combat so now she Ooh, sorry about that um actually i'm gonna have to go so i'll see you all next time bye